Tell me if this sounds familiar. You're on CPAP and your AHI numbers are great, but you're still really tired. What the bloody hell is going on? Isn't this therapy supposed to make us feel fantastic? I think I might have found the answer. Let me show you. In today's Sleep HQ case study, I'll expose some hard truths about CPAP data accuracy, and I'll teach you some fundamental skills to help you validate those often misleading results. Let's do it. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Firstly, thanks to Joe who kindly invited me to his Sleep HQ account and authorized me to share his data with you today. Joe, to show my appreciation, I'm sending you a REM sleep O2 ring, buddy, that you can use to monitor your blood oxygen levels and also your heart rate. And this ring will shortly be integrated fully with Sleep HQ, which is very exciting. Now, today's video will mainly focus on the apnea hypopnea index which is how many respiratory events someone is having per hour per night. And on this particular day up here, top left-hand corner, you can see he had an AHI of 6.32, which was up 4.2 from the previous night. Now at first glance, 6.32 isn't too bad. Well, it doesn't seem too bad. As we all know, the goal is to try and get that number under five if we can, um, but 6.32, Eh, it's not too bad. It's still very, very mild. Okay, room for improvement. Most of you would assume that all this detailed data, all these numbers provided by the manufacturers on the CPAP machines would be fairly accurate. I mean, it's a medical device after all, especially that apnea hypopnea index because that's the number we use to validate the therapy efficacy. How well is your CPAP therapy controlling your apnea? That's the number we all use. Well, what I'm about to show you might shock you a bit. Now let's scroll down the page and take a look at Joe's airflow. Let's see how he's breathing. And this is what's so special about Sleep HQ. We get this full high definition, full detailed CPAP therapy data, and you just don't get this information on your My Air app or your Dream Map app. We can see each individual breath that Joe takes through the night. On the flow rate, here's the flow rate. Now it looks like a great big mess and that's because we've condensed thousands and thousands of breaths, individual breaths into a very short space. But what we can do is we can zoom in and it will become much more clear. As you can see right now, I can also hit the Z on my keyboard, which will zoom in. And here we go. We've got a great snapshot of Joe's breathing at this point in time. So you can see right here down the bottom, we've got the timestamps and they're 30 seconds apart. And to me, this breathing looks really, really good. It's nice and regular, it's nice and consistent, um, it's nice and stable, that's what breathing should be. Breathing is never gonna be perfect, we're not trying to get it perfect, but we just want it to look fairly stable. All right, you can see him breathing in and breathing out. As the line comes up, he's breathing in, and as the line goes down, he's breathing out. Now what we can do is we can hit the right arrow and we can start scrolling through the night. Now you're about to see something change. All right. Now remember before, let's go back a bit. Let's have a look at his breathing here. Okay, let's have a look here. Nice and stable, nice and consistent, nice and regular. Let's move forward a few minutes. So we're going forward here. Can you see how now it's very irregular. You've got these periods here where he's taking these great big breaths, and then you've got all these little shallow breaths. Look how small some of these breaths are here. Right? He's having irregular breathing now. These are what we call hypopneas. You don't really need to know all the classifications and all the terminology. What you need to be able to do is just visualize and see the difference between regular breathing, which was what I showed you before, the baseline, and when breathing turns shit, like it is now. Right in the middle, you can see here we have this vertical gray line that has a H on it. 
and that H stands for hypopnea. Now this line is a respiratory flag provided by the CPAP machine. So the CPAP machine algorithm is monitoring the breathing and it's decided that right there is a hypopnea. But do you notice anything? If we zoom out, where's all the rest of the flags? All right, we can, we've got one over here, but where's the one here? Where's the one here? Where's the one here? Where's the one here? There's a whole bunch of flags missing. Let's scroll forward and you'll see some more. Once again, there should be a flag right here. You can see the breathing has got really narrow and then he's gone. <sighs> any sleep tech, any chimpanzee with a set of eyes can see clearly that the airway has become very narrow here for longer than 10 seconds and it should be marked with a flag and it's not. And this is the point I'm trying to show you in this video. So let's quickly talk some numbers. Now on this particular night, the ResMed CPAP flagged 51 respiratory events, which gives us an AHI of 6.32. Doesn't sound too bad, hey? No cause for concern. Well, I invited five qualified sleep techs, including myself, 14 years experience, to review the same airflow, to review Joe's breathing and do a manual count. Count up all the flags as they saw it. And you know what the lowest count was? It was mine, 115, which gives an AHI of 14.3. That's a massive difference. Let's zoom out and have a look at Joe's therapy trend over a larger time frame. Let's go a whole month. Now this top chart here is the AHI trend. And we just looked at Monday the 16th of May, right here. AHI 6.32. Now there's another day that grabs my attention. It's this day over here, the 5th of May. And his AHI was nine. Now the day before that, the 4th of May, it was 1.91. So that's a big jump on that particular day. And let's scroll down a little bit and see if Joe might've changed his therapy pressure levels. And he did. Now this was the 4th of May. And you can see here, he's got a max pressure of 10.8. And then one day after, he drops it to 10.4. And I really wanna emphasize that point. Sometimes really small changes to your therapy pressure levels can result in big fluctuations in your apnea control. So you really need to monitor it, especially if you're gonna be dropping those pressure levels. All right, so let's go to the fifth. All right, so we'll go back to the dashboard the daily view and we'll go to the fifth. Here we are on the fifth. Apnea hypopnea index of nine up 7.09 on the previous day. Now let's go down and have a look again at the breathing. All right, so once again, you can see it very clearly. So the ResMed machine, it's marked one flag. You can see there's one flag here, but there needs to be more. There should be a flag here, 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 here. It's missing a whole bunch of flags again. And once again, we've done another count. So on this particular night, ResMed flagged 57 events in total with the AHI of nine and the sleep techs, the minimum was 110 events with an apnea hypopnea index of 17.3. Some of the sleep techs were scoring 150 flags, all right, but the lowest, which was me again, was 110. I'm quite conservative, especially when I'm dealing with CPAP machines, all right? So once again, guys, just a massive difference, almost double. And to any other sleep techs that are watching, g'day mates, I've put a share link to this flow rate data in the description of the video. So if you're interested, feel free, click the link and you too can analyze the flow rate. Give us a count and put it in the comments section below. So what on earth is going on? Why is ResMed supposedly the market leader missing so many apparent flags? And is this potentially by design? Let's find out. The problem is this. ResMed and all the other manufacturers, not just ResMed, I know I'll pick on ResMed a little bit, they've set the hypopnea flag thresholds very high. 
So all these hypopneas here, 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 that would typically be marked by a sleep tech or anyone with a pair of eyes, a chimpanzee for God's sake. Well, all these events are not getting flagged and they're flying under the CPAP radar because they're not meeting the strict criteria set by the manufacturers. And that right there is the problem. CPAP machines are just computer code. They see everything black and white, ones and zeros. Where sleep apnea, it's a, it's a human condition that has many shades of gray. And that's why you need human eyes to spot those problems. So unless your airflow drops by a massive 50% for 10 seconds or more, Resume doesn't feel there's a problem. They won't flag the events. It doesn't meet their strict criteria. How you could be having hundreds or 40% drops a night, just like Joe, severely affecting your sleep quality, and you wouldn't even know it. Although, you'd probably feel pretty shit during the day, and that's what many of you are reporting. All the industry professionals, the doctors, the clinicians, the specialists, the sleep techs, we're all using this AHI number generated by the CPAP machine as a guide for treatment efficacy, as a guide to tell us how well the therapy is controlling a patient's apnea. But it's not accurate. It's nowhere near accurate. The machines are getting it wrong. And so we're getting it wrong. And you guys, you're the ones who suffer because your machine is telling you that it's controlling your apnea and it's not. So what can we do about it? Well, it's pretty simple, really. We just need to take a look at how you're breathing. We need to take a look at the flow rate. And I'll show you that now. Now, you've got two options when it comes to this, and they're both free. You can use my sleephq.com, which is my platform, the one we're using now. And that will work for most ResMed machines and the DreamStation 1. And we're integrating new machines every month. But if you have a different machine and you want to check it now, then you can also download some open source software that's called Oscar. And I'll put a link to Oscar in the description of the video, but I'll show you on my platform now. The first thing you guys need to do is see what your normal breathing looks like. And you can find that at the start of the night before you go to sleep. So let's zoom in on Joe's flow rate. This is how he breathes when he's awake and it looks fine. It looks natural. It's nice and stable. It's nice and regular. Once you get a mental image of what your regular breathing looks like, you can then scan through the rest of the night and have a look at periods where it might not look like this. That's all there is to it. I'm not expecting you guys to become sleep techs overnight and know what a hypopnea is, obstructive apnea, central apnea, mixed hypopnea, all these bullshit terminology. You don't need to know it. All you need to know is that looks good, that looks shit. That's it. So let's just go to a part now where Joe's breathing does look shit. All I'm doing here is just clicking my mouse and dragging over a section of interest. And I'll do it again. Now you can clearly see, you don't need to be a sleep tech to see that this looks completely different to our baseline breathing, our nice, regular, stable breathing. Something's changed. The pattern has changed. Keep an eye out for these patterns, All right? But we have these little narrow breaths. And then all of a sudden these great big where the breathing's basically catching up, trying to get more oxygen into the blood. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Now, when you're scanning through your flow rate, just using the right arrow and you're going through and you find these sorts of patterns, the next thing you do is see if they're flagged. And you can see here, we've got a flag here, a flag here. It's missed one here, All right? That's not too bad, it's missed one. But if there was only one here, one H, and then the rest didn't have flags, well, that's sort of like a, you know, a warning signal for you that perhaps your apnea hypopnea index isn't what you think it is. All right, so we'll go through here a bit more. All right, so it's flagged here. That's good. It's flagged here. It's flagged here. It's quite accurate here. It's flagged. It's missed this one. It's missed this one. It's missed this one. It's missed this one. It's got this one. So it's it's missing a lot. Many CPAP users also use O2 rings. 
like this one here, to monitor their blood oxygen levels and heart rate through the night. And they use this information to then substantiate the CPAP report. It stands to reason that if your blood oxygen levels are good, then your breathing is probably not too far behind. Old mate Joe did request some insights and therapy recommendations. So here's my thoughts. G'day Joe, mate, there's clearly some periods throughout the night where your CPAP pressure is inadequate. This is most likely during REM sleep or potentially when you're on your back. Now, if you continue with CPAP mode, I'd increase your pressure up to 13. Try that for a few nights and then evaluate the improvements. Alternatively, you could try auto CPAP, but with a tight range. I'd set your auto min to 11 and your auto max to 14. Once again, try it for a few days and evaluate the improvements. Perhaps we can check back in with you in a few weeks time and check how your sleep HQ data is trending after the changes. Thanks for watching everyone. The take home message is trust, but verify. Don't go blindly into the dark. Grab your sleep HQ torch and shine it right on your breathing. Until next time, sleep well and look after your mates. Bye. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you.